more of a zone matchup, I think they'll be in pretty good shape. If they uh, if they can't slow the game down again and it's full court, I think the Lady Senators will be uh, be able to roll them. The the Lady Senators, on the other hand, have a ton of experience um, when it comes to playing. You know, they play mostly underclassmen here. Ryan Russell, Maddie Bowsman, and Hattie Griffiths all have played major roles on the varsity team, even though they're just sophomores and juniors, respectively. The seniors are definitely led by the two seniors at this point in the season. Cora Miller leads the team in rebounds with 46 on the year, giving her almost eight a game. Uh, scoring for the Lady Senators is, hand, uh, is led hands down by Chelsea Carter. She leads the team with 118 total points and has put up 20 points in each of the last four games. If the Lady Eagles want to slow down the Lady Senators, what will they have to do to slow down this senior guard who's now averaging 17 points a game for the season? Doug, the Lady Eagles, Doug, will the Lady Eagles be able to do this? And if so, how? Yeah, I think that uh, the main thing that the Lady Eagles are going to have to do is take care of the ball. They're going to need to slow down the uh, uh, all the Lady Senators, and uh, Chelsea has a habit of really taking advantage of those uh, errors that the other teams make. She gets a lot of layups and uh, a lot of points in transition. She's, um, she can go either way, left hand, right hand. She's always looking for the shot. She's tough to stop, um, really be a, a challenge. But I think if the Lady Eagles take care of the ball and uh, make it a half-court game, they've got a, a pretty good chance of, um, of keeping Chelsea in, in control at least. Don't get me wrong, the, the Lady Eagles do have some firepower. They are led um, in scoring by Gracie Adams, their freshman guard, who is 5'9" and comes in averaging almost 20 points a game. That's, that's quite a bit for a freshman to, you know, have stepped up and, and really done in the first part of the season. Doug, what do you, what do you think about her, and is she going to get her 20 tonight? Yeah, I haven't uh, – I didn't remember her from the practice game. It'll be interesting to see if she's able to put those kind of numbers up against the Senators. I will say that the Lady Senators, they play such an up-tempo game that uh, – uh, the other team does uh, normally score some points. We've just been able to get out way in front of them. So uh, I would say that, um, you know, given Gracie's height and or Gracie Adams' height and, and uh, you know, putting up uh, 20 points and eight rebounds, I'm, I'm sure she's going to be tough to stop inside. We do have a lot of girls down there, though, Maddie and and uh, Cassidy and, and Cora all do a, a good job inside. Um, the big girl for uh, Christian Academy did show some of her weaknesses down there. Yeah, there, Stum there. Stumler did did show that hey, you can you can drive and drive and dish a little bit on us. Yeah, yeah, she's a she was a heck of a player, and uh, you know hopefully we'll be able to do a little better better job tonight against Gracie Adams. Well, um, we're going to step away and hear a short commercial from the IHSA, and when we return, we'll be joined by Coach Darren Russell to give us um, his thoughts on tonight's game. We hear it more and more when people talk about sports. We need to change the culture. No more integrity taking a backseat to performance. No more players, coaches, and fans run amok. No more too big to fail. It sounds good. It sounds reasonable. Come to think of it, it sounds like high school sports. At the Indiana High School Athletic Association, we know that sports are just part of a student athlete's overall education and that there's more to the game than winning. We also know that high school sports are incredibly exciting. They're rich with tradition and bring communities together like nothing else. In a word, they're pure. More and more, that's what people want. High school sports, pure spirit, Pure Sport. This message brought to you by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, the IHSAA, and the high schools in this community. Once again, I'm joined by Head Senator Lady Basketball Coach Darren Russell. Um, Darren, you've had a little bit of time to, pre to prepare for a team, which is kind of something new for you. Um, you know, with the, the schedule that you play early, you play so many games, not a whole lot of time to focus on a team. What have you been able to find out about Lanesville? Well, we scrimmaged them at the beginning of the year, and, you know, that can be misleading. Uh, you know, last year we scrimmaged them, and, you know, then we went and played them this time last year and did not perform as well. They made some changes from the scrimmage, and, you know, fortunately we got out of there with a win, but it wasn't as comfortable as what we would have liked or expected. Um, Lanesville is a very young athletic team. Uh, they've gone basically – all freshmen and you know uh, there's a senior there's a junior that plays some actually starts but 
for the most part, um, you know, they are young, they're athletic. The Adams girl uh, that's a freshman, uh, you know, she's she's a very good ball player, very athletic, uh, averaging about 20 points, 8 rebounds. So, you know, we're going to have our hands hands full with her. Um, but, yeah, it, it's been nice this week to have some time. That's why I told the girls. I think Thursday night was the first really – intense practice that we've been able to have since before the season started because since that time you know we we play then night off then play again so not had a lot of time to to devote to devote to ourselves and you know what we need to do to get better and you know we spent a lot of time Thursday and Friday hopefully doing things that's going to make us better. Um, you know, talk talk some about your team. What you're what you're pleased with so far throughout the season, and what you'd like to see change a little bit. Well, our our chemistry. Uh, you know, well, the, the girls are playing extremely well together. Uh, very unselfish. I think we're averaging 16, 17 assists a ball game, and you know that's that says a lot right there because you know they're looking for the open girls. They're they're not forcing shots, and you know so we're doing that well. Um, you know. I like our effort. You know, there's been very few times during these first seven games that, you know, I could really question whether we gave it everything we had. And, you know, so so that's a big thing. Something that we've got to get continue to get better at is rebounding. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be a big issue the entire season because we're not huge. Um, but we got to get the – we got to secure the rebounds in order for us to be able to get out and run. Um, this this Lanesville team that you're you're playing just came off their first win. I'm sure they're probably pretty high getting their their first win of the season. It was over Christian Academy. I think they won by ten or fifteen points. Yeah. Um, you know the same Christian Academy team that you came out and, and beat by almost thirty. Um, you know what's what's kind of the the mindset there? Well, I'm you know that's definitely a big boost for Lanesville to get that first win. Uh, you know it was a two point game with two minutes to go and. Christian Academy, you know, as we saw, struggles to shoot the ball. And, you know, they were, I think they were 14 out of 72 on the night and still within two points with two minutes to go. So, um, you know, that that tells me something right there. But at the same time, Lanesville, you know, they're going to come in here with confident, uh, you know, that with that win. And, you know, they're, they're, as I said, they're playing the young kids, so they're getting better every game. Um, you know, it, it's nice to, to have a, a Saturday night game. Um, you, know, you, yeah. you don't get very many of those throughout the season. Um, what have you told your girls about tonight being a Saturday we're, night game? We're going to treat tonight kind of like, you know, this is way in advance, but it, like a sectional final. There's no game before us. You know, we brought them in, they're shooting, um, you know, and then we just go out and play. It's very similar. It's the exact same situation as the sectional championship. So, you know, we're going to look at it from that standpoint. Um, but it is different, um, you know, Saturday night, as you said, we don't get a lot of those. Usually we play on Saturday. It's a JV start at 11 o'clock, and varsity will play about 1230. So, you know, it's nice, and um, we're hoping that there's a good, good, good-sized good crowd tonight. Uh, looking at some of the, some of the s- statistics from both teams, um, you know, Lanesville gives up about 62 points a game. You're averaging about 69. So that's, you know, we're looking at a, a game in the, in the 60s, upper 60s, low 70s. Um, you know, your defensive average and their offensive average, both are the same. They're both at 49. Are we going to see the same type of, of game that we've seen all year long from you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we do. We're, we're going to look to pressure and, and pick them up full court and, and hopefully get to running. Um, you know, defensively, hopefully we can hold them under that 49 points a game. Uh, you know, that's that's something we would like to hold teams right around the 40 mark or, or even under. So that's, that's going to be a – you know, a big point for us tonight also. I'm um, going to give you a little bit of time here. Brag a little bit on, on Chelsea Carter, how she's played over the past four or five games. Yeah, really the whole season. I mean, Chelsea Chelsea has come into it this year as a senior and is, I mean, playing extremely well. Um, and it, not just from the scoring standpoint. I mean, she's doing the, all the little things. She's playing defense. She's hustling. She's rebounding. Uh, you know, she's, she's sharing the ball. She plays some time at the point. I mean, she just, you can tell she's a senior and she wants to go out, you know, with everything she's got. I mean, she's not holding anything back and, and that's what you want to see. And, you know, and she's providing good leadership. Uh, you know, that was one of the things that, you know, we was curious who was going to take over the leadership with Rygon. And, uh, you know, Chelsea stepped up. She's not a real vocal person, but, you know, she does it by leadership or example and, you know, showing these younger kids 
you know, how to do it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a great start to the year for Chelsea. Um, your team has kind of climbed in the rankings a little bit. They start off um, early preseason, you know, in the, in the middle teens, then um, jump to eight. And then over the past week or so, have jumped to number seven. You know, do you see your team as as a seventh ranked team? Do you see do you see them? I know coaches always say it's just a number out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially this early in the season, you know, it's just kind of like you're throwing darts. And you know, we've scored some points, we've had some big wins, and I think that's caught some people's attention. Plus, they know what we have back. Um, but those rankings don't mean anything. I mean, you know, I I trade those rankings right now for a sectional championship. That's all, that's all we're concerned about. Um, so, you know, it doesn't mean anything to us other than it, it puts a big bullseye on our back every time we step on the floor. That, that's exactly what I was hoping you were going to say, you know, the yeah. big bullseye on your back. Yeah. Everybody's shooting for you because they see that number beside yeah. your name. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely gunning for you. Um, one thing on your, on your stat sheet that kind of sticks out to me is your free throw percentage. I know you said you wanted it to be in the 70s. You know, you'd like it to be mid to upper 70s. Right now it's at 65, and you start off the year kind of with some, some struggles, but, um, you know, the, the, the people have kind of come around who are struggling early in the season. You know, Hattie Griffith started off kind of slow from the free throw line, but has really picked that up. Yeah. Um, you know, and Bailey Roll, who doesn't get a whole lot of time in the, in the game, but seems to find her way to the free throw line <laughs> yeah, quite a, a bit. So. magnet. <laughs> So, you know, those girls have kind of picked it up. What can you attribute that? Just concentration. Uh, you know, as I said, we've got to hit 70% every day in practice of where we run. And, you know, very few times do we have to run. So it's just a matter of settling down and, and shooting the free throws in the game the same way as they do in practice. And, uh, you know, Bailey, uh, you know, it, last year she shot 70-some percent on varsity, shot almost 80 percent on JV. She, she can shoot free throws. It's just a matter of having confidence in herself when she steps up there. Same thing with Hattie, uh, you know, and, and I think I think especially, you know, it's, it's with boys too, but also especially with girls, they miss one that sticks in their head and, you know, then they're probably going to miss three or four in a row. So, you know, we just try and tell them, move on, forget it. We know you can hit them. Just step up there and knock them down. You've you've played seven games so far. This is number eight. Um, you know it's it's been kind of a whirlwind the first couple of weeks of the season. I know you've got some some players with some dings and some some injuries. You know what's the health of your team look like? Well, Taylor's still going to be out. She's probably going to be out for another week or so with her knee from South Central. Um, Ryan's been having a lot of problems with her shoulder. Went to a physical or the shoulder doctor up at Methodist Sports on Wednesday. And started therapy and is on cortisone pills, hopefully to, you know, get her back. Uh, she is going to dress tonight, but the plan is for her not to play unless we absolutely have to. Um, you know, so those two girls are, you know, are they were big parts of what we were doing. And so tonight, it's like we talk, someone else has got to step up. And, you know, hopefully it's Cassidy Keltner. We need Cassidy to get rolling. Um, and the big thing with her is staying out of foul trouble. Uh, you know, if she can stay out of foul trouble, she's going to cause a lot of problems out on the floor. But it's just getting her to not make the silly fouls. With with those two, you know, not playing, that drops you down to um, seven players. I know you're going to bring up some some other girls. Who are those girls you're going to bring up? We're going to bring up Sarah Stice. Uh, she can play point. She can play shooting guard. We'll bring up Lexi Griffiths. She's the same thing or same way. She can play point or shooting. So that gives us a couple more guards. And then Gracie Abels. I mean, Gracie, Gracie I'm hopefully molding into a player like Maddie. Maddie is. I mean, she's long. She's She's quick. She's athletic. She can shoot, she can play inside. So, you know, those three girls are going to be there to give us minutes if we need it, especially with no JV game tonight, so we don't have to worry about the quarter situation. This is going to be the first time that you're going to say we're not going with the same lineup that we've uh, always yeah, gone yeah, with. Yeah, so going let, with, let's hear your starting lineup. What are you going uh, with tonight? We're going with Hattie at the point. We'll go with Chelsea at the shooting guard, and then we'll go Maddie and Cassidy at forwards and also Cora to forward. Okay. So we'll have some size. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Coach. We'll see you after the game. All right, thanks. We hear it more and more when people talk about sports. We need to change the culture. No more integrity taking a backseat to performance. No more players, coaches, and fans run amok. No more too big to fail. It sounds good. It sounds reasonable. Come to think of it, it sounds like high school sports. 
At the Indiana High School Athletic Association, we know that sports are just part of a student-athlete's overall education and that there's more to the game than winning. We also know that high school sports are incredibly exciting. They're rich with tradition and bring communities together like nothing else. In a word, they're pure. More and more, that's what people want. High school sports. Pure spirit, pure sport. This message brought to you by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, the IHSAA, and the high schools in this community. We're back to live Lady Senator basketball action here. We're about a minute away from the national anthem. So we're going to run down our keys to victory tonight. Doug, first one, push the pace. We've got to get out and run. Um, just like all year, you know, Coach Russell said, you know, we're not going to hold back. We're going to run as much as we can. Tonight's no different. Um, number two, stay out of foul trouble. This, this especially goes for Cassidy Keltner, the uh, sophomore who's going to come into the starting lineup tonight. We've got to keep her on the floor. We can't afford the, the early fouls um, that she tends to pick up. And number three, hands up to rebound. We've got to get our hands up. We've got to rebound the ball. We can't, can't try to rebound with our, our hands at our waist. Um, you know, we just don't get those balls. So our, ha our, our hands have to be up in order to get that rebound. Um, those are our keys to victory tonight. We're 26 seconds away. Um, the, the Lady Eagles are set and ready to go along with your Lady Senators. So we're going to step away and hear um, the Star Spangled Banner. Um, so we will be back with you with the starting lineups here in just a few moments. Back to live action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on Ron Smith Court. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome the Lanesville Lady Eagles tonight to uh, the gymnasium here. On the year, they are 1 and 5. Their last win coming against Christian Academy just this Thursday. They are led by head coach Kevin Smith, who has a, who's been there for six years and has a 37 and 82 record overall. The Lady Senators are trailing Lanesville in the past 15 years. Lanesville has won 10 of those matchups. Um, but the last one that they did have, West Washington, was victorious 48-35 on November 19th last year. So um, definitely kind of swinging towards the, the Lady Senators. <coughs> the public address announcer, Mr. Claude Combs, is reading the uh, IHSAA sportsmanship um, pledge that the, the – School reads before every varsity uh, event. So we're going to jump into the starting lineups tonight. For Lanesville, they go with a two guard, um, two forward, and one center set. Starting at point guard is the senior, 5'1", number 11, Michaela Philpot. Also in the backcourt is 5'3", freshman, number 13, Georgia Brumley. In the front court, they start uh, the 5'9", Freshman forward, Gracie Adams. Like I said in the pregame, she is averaging 20 points and 8 rebounds per game. 
<coughs> also starting at forward is the 5'5 freshman, number 31, Danielle Hare. And finally, the 5'9 freshman center, number 12, Elizabeth Turner. <coughs> West Washington coming out tonight with a new lineup. Starting at point guard is the 5'5 junior, averaging 10 points and five rebounds, number one, Hattie Griffiths. Rounding out the backcourt uh, is 5'4 senior guard, number five, Chelsea Carter, chipping in 17 and four rebounds. Getting her first start is the 5'11 forward, averaging three points, two rebounds a game, number 10, Cassidy Keltner. Starting for the Lady Senators, also in the front court is the 5'10 junior forward, number two, Maddie Bowsman, averaging 11.6 rebounds. And rounding out the starting lineup is the 5'9 senior forward, averaging 9.7 rebounds a game, number 12, Cora Miller. The Lady Senators are coached by Mr. Darren Russell, who is 31 and 26 in his three years here. This team is ranked third in the state at 1A and averaging 66 points a game, so they definitely can put them up no problem. Doug, getting ready for tip here. <coughs> yeah, it's going to be an exciting start, hopefully, for the ladies and senators. It's um, be something new for Cassidy as she gets her first start in varsity action. That's a that's a great way to uh, to start off your your you know action in varsity is with the opening tip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adams does win that opening tip, so. The Lanesville Lady Eagles get the ball into the front court and s run their offensive set. Lady Senators are in a man-to-man -man defense here. And yeah, the Lady Senators are picking up out front, really trying to push the pressure here up front early in the game. Yeah, making sure that they don't get in that lane and definitely trying to keep it away from number 23, uh, Gracie Adams, who is their, their kind of catalyst. Centers go 2-3 out of bounds. That's kind of the, the typical play there underneath. Yep. Nice Chelsea play Carter Chelsea. with the steal. Unable to hit the bucket, though, so the uh, Lady Eagles are going to take over. Lady Senators pick up full court man-to-man. -man. Gonna do a, gonna change it into a trap. Hattie with the steal. Oh, gonna wave that one off. That's <laughs> too bad. <laughs> that was quite the offensive move there by Maddie Bowsman, but not gonna be able to count that one. Yeah, I'd like to see Maddie get on track tonight. She's, um, she can really uh, get it going if she gets that first one to go down. Yeah, yeah. Georgia Brumley picks up her first foul. First on the team, first on her. Bowsman from the corner for three. Yeah. Kind of the offensive set there, you know, uh, end up with two offensive rebounds there. And, and get two shots, but unable to knock any of them down. We're yeah. still 0-0 here. Bowsman in inbounds the ball to Hattie. Chelsea Carter for three. Bang. Three point goal number five, Chelsea. Lady Eagles quickly get it into the front court where Cora Miller kicks one. Yeah, it's nice to see Chelsea hit the three on the zone. Uh, that was what we struggled with at Lanesville in the practice game is we just couldn't get a three to go down. There's Gracie Adams for her first attempt of the night, up and good. Hattie down the lane. Hattie misses that shot. Adams and Keltner going after the rebound. Keltner picks up the foul. Just like we said, what we don't want to see, we don't want to see Cassidy get in that early foul trouble. Senator still pressing the action here. 
That's Hare with the first, or with the second bucket, sorry. Waynesville out to the 4 3 early lead. Keltner with the shot blocked by, I believe, Gracie Adams got that block. Hare misses. Bowsman with the rebound. Swinging it across court. Bowsman for three. Oh, In and man. out. Keltner with the rebound. No good. Hattie with the rebound. No good. Keltner gets the rebound. Out to Carter. Carter with the bucket. Chelsea keeps it up. She scores in a lot of different ways for the Senators. Yeah. <laughs> Miller going to pick up the foul. Foul on 12. Cora Miller, her first team second. On the line will be 31, Danielle Hare. Good Danielle shot. Hare steps to the line for her first free throw attempt of the evening. That one's up and good. Sets up with the second one, and it's good, too. Quickly into the front court. Lady Senators swing the ball to Chelsea Carter. Three up. Bowsman underneath, unable to get that one. Hair unable to get that. Keltner with the rebound. That's Brumley with her second foul. Mackenzie Pavey comes in. Lady Senators are down 6 5 early here in the first period. Miller up, no good. Adams with the rebound. Court is kind of falling away on that. I'd like to see her take it more straight up. Chrissy goes up, going to get the foul with the body apparently it looks like. Adams going to pick up the foul here, saying got her with the body, not so much the arm getting her with the body. So, Mighty Bowsman steps to the line for her first free throws of the evening. First one up and good. Shelby Haas comes in to replace Brumley with those two fouls. Addie lets the second one fly, and it's good. Lady Senators out 7 6. Lady Eagles with a turnover there. Maddie's an excellent free throw shooter, and I think that put her over 80% for the year hitting those two. Well, that's, that's what Coach Russell always likes to see. He likes those 80% shooters. He wants his team to be at, at least 70. So, Keltner up with the bucket. That's where we got to be careful. Keltner reaching in there. Bowsman with the steal. Hattie Griffiths oh. unable to finish. Hattie's probably got four or five rebounds already. Keltner, no. Hattie, Another. no. Twenty-four Haas here on the foul. That was twenty-four Shelby Haas. That's her first and deep four to the line will be Hattie Griffiths. Hattie Griffiths steps up where she's fifty-five percent on the year, but hits the first one, so that's a good start for her. Yeah, she shot really poorly the first game or two, but she's been knocking them down at a good clip the last three or four games. Yeah, definitely. Second one up and good also. 
I always have to give Shelby a hard time, who is in the, the class across from me, um, about free throw shooting when we play spelling basketball. <laughs> so. Lady Eagles come out and set up their offense. 3.30 left to go here in the first period. Lady Senators are out 11 to 6. That's Haas for three. Well, they're only going to give her a two on that one. Yeah, I think the referee closest called her on the line. There we go with a turnover. Maddie always has the right idea. She sees the open person. She just doesn't always deliver. Yeah, doesn't quite get it there yeah. just in time. She definitely has a, an idea of where she wants to go with the ball, and it's normally the right place. Keltner up. No good. Let me get a basket here. Miller at the free throw line, no good. Mm. Kind of a sloppy game here at the beginning. Yep. Hare with the rebound, comes up to half court, lets Lanesville set up their offense. We're going to see Bailey Roll check in. Maddie's done a pretty good job on the uh, Adams girl. I yeah. think in the man-to-man, -man, she's held her down pretty good. It's when we went zone out of bounds, she scored earlier. That's definitely a mismatch there with Hare on uh, Griffiths underneath. <clears throat> Hattie is strong, but not going to be able to match up to Hare underneath. No. Nice There's pass. a nice move underneath. Mm -hmm. Miller unable to finish. Good D. See, Chelsea just... Hattie up and good. Chelsea's really taking advantage of the errors the other teams make. She's yeah. done it all year so far. A sprint back. Pavey misses. Bowsman with the rebound. Back up into the front court. There's Miller underneath. Nice bucket. Lady Center's out 15 12. A little over a minute to go. Another board by Hattie. Hattie's got a ton of rebounds in the first period alone. Swings it out to Carter for three. That one's short. Going to go out of bounds. In the game to the center, be 23, Bradley Rowe. In the game to the Lady Eagles, be number 11, Michaela Philpott. Like I said, Bailey Rowe checking in here. Well, I think that's a success for Cassidy. She made it through most of the first quarter and first start. Only got one foul. Yeah. Had several shots. I'm sure she wished she could have knocked yeah, down. Yeah, I wish she could have knocked down. Oh <laughs> Laid on the whistle. <laughs> yeah, everybody on that ball. <laughs> After the first two went down, they could have whistled, didn't they? Yeah. Brought a couple more in. In comes 52. <laughs> Lady Senators with 25 seconds here to go. See if they can get a good shot. Carter drives and good. Nice three-point play there. The Lady Senators aren't much for stalling. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> they're, they're not going to wait. If they see a good shot, chances are it's going to go up. Yeah. Keebler picks up that foul, so Keebler's going to come out. Georgia Brumley with her two fouls is going to come in for the final 19 seconds of the first period. Chelsea Carter at the free throw line. Try to complete this three-point play. Up and good. Lady Senators out 18-12. Cora running the court, up. Ah. 
Cora unable to finish there to get the, the end of the bucket quarter. We're going to step away here. Short message from the ISHSAA. We'll be back for second period action. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Indiana. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Back to live action here. Lady Senators are out uh, 18 to 12 after the first period of play. Yeah, looking at the stat sheet, it looks like our point guard, 5'4", Hattie Griffiths, has got five rebounds in the first quarter. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty That's big pace there. Definitely nice pace to have. And Chelsea Carter has eight points in that same first period. There's, ooh, thought that was going to be Miller's block, but instead she gets a foul called on her, her second. So Keltner's going to come in. All right, so now we'll see how Cassidy can do trying to keep from getting her second here early in the second quarter. Yeah, yeah. Hare steps up, hits her first. Second one up and good. Carter in the corner, bang. Already in double digits early. She loves that cross court pass or the or the one in and out where she yeah. gets where she's already faced up to the bucket. She can knock it down. Good D by Maddie there on yeah. the Adams girl. Maddie definitely definitely hustling after that ball. Maddie can guard about any height player. She uh, does a good job. Adams lets the first one fly again. Another rebound by Hattie. <laughs> You're asking what stat to track that one. <laughs> How many is Hattie going to end up with tonight? Bailey Roll with a nice feed underneath, but unable to uh, secure it is Cassidy Keltner. Twenty-one wow. fourteen. A little mix up there by the Lady Eagles. <laughs> Turner going to pick up that turnover there. Pot with the miss. Going to yeah. get a push underneath. Hattie's blocking out. Man, she's doing a great job rebounding. 23 going to be Adams with her second. Be nice to get another one on her before the half. Yeah, that would definitely help out the Lady Senators' uh, offense, offensive problems. You know, if they can keep her out of the game. Yep. That's who the offense kind of runs through. Stop and go by Hattie. Swings it around to Maddie. Maddie up. Ooh. No good. Bailey Roll with the rebound. <coughs> yeah, Number 12, Lane, Turner going to pick up that foul. Yeah, Lanesville plays the, the zone most of the time, so I think it will be pretty easy for the um, Gracie Adams to keep from picking up a third foul unless she's just silly about it. Yeah. Bailey Roll knocks down that one. 
Make it 22-14, 6 3 left to go in the first half. Rolls second one, up and no good. Adams down the lane, no good. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna have a slew of Senators there. Just a matter of who they want to call that Looks foul like on. they called it on Bailey. Yeah, Bailey Roll gonna pick up that one. Our first. Could have easily been on Cassidy or at least one other lady senator. Adams gonna check out. Brumley back in with her two fouls. In the corner. Brumley misses that one, but Payer is able to put it in. Lady Senators into the front court quickly, just like they have been all season. Maddie could have, probably could have got a better angle on that one to make the yeah. entry pass. Maybe a dribble to the baseline would have helped. That was Pavey with a miss. Bowsman rips the ball out, but unable to get it. There's an attempt that there's going to be an attempt for Hare at a three-point bucket on a hustle play underneath. So, Lady Center's got a little out of control on defense there. They were jumping around at every shot fake and pass fake. And yeah, yeah. Hattie Griffiths. What happens. Hattie Griffiths picks up her first. Once again, remember, if you're out there watching on uh, the West Washington live stream, you can uh, comment, and we will get back to you as soon as we see it. Hattie underneath with a scoop, unable to get it. Going to stay with him. See if we can score on our out of bounds play like uh, we did before. Yeah. Out top to Carter. Carter going to drive, put it up, no good. Hare with the rebound. A little bit of a force on that one by Chelsea. Going to get a travel on Brumley. <laughs> We've got some people up behind us helping us out. Yeah, we well, ought to have them give them the headset for a <laughs> bit. <laughs> they might have a different vantage point than we do. I don't know. We've got some pretty nice seats here. Yeah. They apparently see a lot more fouls. I think the higher up you go, the more fouls you see. That's right. <laughs> Carter with the nice drive underneath. Too hard. Roll with the rebound. Roll up. Oh. Going to give her the offensive foul on the hook there. Couldn't see it, but could have been. Back in comes Gracie Adams, and out goes Philpot, the senior guard. Gracie Abel's in the game for the Senators. I think that's the first varsity action for her in a while. Yeah, or she, maybe saw, ever. she saw just a little bit of action um, at the end of um, a game. So yeah. she's been in, but first, first major action here. Yeah. Carter on the ground gets it. To Bowsman, back to Griffiths. Keltner for three. Maybe Hattie with count. another rebound. Carter for three. Keltner. We're going to come the other way. Kind of a fast and furious pace here. Yeah. Hare misses. Keltner with the rebound. Up to Carter. <laughs> Senators need to slow down and run a little bit of offense. Griffiths with the turnover. That was a nice move. <laughs> Gracie Adams goes right down the lane. Makes a, a real nice move there. Yeah, the finger roll. <clears throat> we got a 30-second timeout here by Coach Darren Russell, who is uh, 
going to give his girls just a little bit of a break. Some of them look like they're <laughs> a little <laughs> winded there. Uh, they played quite a few minutes, you know, with, with Ryan not in the game and Taylor not able to play in the game. It's, uh, you know, a, a shorthanded crew there, and they're picking up more minutes than what they're really kind of used to. So, Yeah, definitely. Then Coral with the two fouls, I think, probably limiting uh, some of the substitutions here in the second quarter. She probably won't see the floor till the very end or maybe third quarter. Right. Senator's going to set up some offense, move the ball around. Maddie Bowsman for two. That's her fourth point of the night. Lady Senators are out 24 21, 240 left to go in the first half. Carter runs that one down to Maddie Bowsman out in the front court. Bowsman unable to hit that one. Cassidy goes for the block. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what Coach Russell was looking for. No, no. Keltner picks up her second foul. <coughs> 31. Danielle Hare comes up to the line. First one up and good. Chelsea Carter out there looking to, there was apparently some, some perspiration on the floor and couldn't find it, but now they're wiping the floor. So Bailey Roll comes in for Cassidy Keltner. Hare still at the free throw line, going to shoot her second, trying to make this a 24-23 game. That one's up, no good, but Gracie Adams gets the rebound. That no good. Oh, the Lady Senators have a tough time getting the ball off to the free after the missed free throw and uh, gives Lady Eagles another chance. Ball comes into Turner. Phil Pot with the ball. Back to Turner. Oh, there's a travel. <laughs> Nice hands by um, Bailey Roll, who gets her hand in there and then causes, I believe it was Pavey, to walk because she couldn't get the ball to the ground. Hattie Griffiths brings the ball up. Lady Senators looking to run a little bit of offense here. 24-22. Going to have a hand check there on Phil Pot. Her first foul of the evening, eight on the Lady Eagles. In comes 24, Shelby Haas for Brumley. Maddie Bowsman steps to the line where she came in tonight, 15 of 19 for 79%. She hit her first two, so. And we jinxed her. That one no good. Going to stay with the Lady Eagles. Lady Senators jo just don't seem to have the, the hustle that they usually do. Good rebound by Maddie Bowsman. Yeah, they're definitely winded here in the second quarter. Some of these girls, I think, have played every minute. And normally we have a good substitution um, rotation. Bowsman misses that one. I definitely agree with you. You know, it just doesn't seem like the girls are used to playing this amount of minutes without yeah. a break in between and, and not, not having the girls in the game that we normally do. Makes it hard to get those rotations down. Yeah, that's right. Because I think Hattie and Chelsea and Maddie, I don't think they've been I out I don't think yet. they've come out of the game. Come on. <laughs> come off pretty hard. 
Adams shoots that one, and it comes off of Haas's head out of bounds. So Lady Senators do take control of the ball here, here up 24-22, right under a minute left to go in the first half. Two-point bucket by Maddie Bowsman, assist to Hattie Griffiths. Lady Eagles hurry into the front court where Phil Pot shoots a three. Gracie Abels gets a hand on it, but unable to control it. Gracie's competed pretty good out there. She's yeah. uh, definitely physically capable of competing and, and knows where she's supposed to be most of the time. Pavey up, no good. Carter with the rebound. They say slow it up. Let's get the last shot here. Hattie with the ball in her hand. Swing it back around. Hattie for three. No good. Don't foul. Don't foul. All right. Lady Eagles unable to get that ball in the air uh, to finish the first half. Lady Senators are up 26-22 as we go into halftime. We're going to take a short break, hear a message from the IHSAA, let us catch our breath, and we'll get you some stats here in just a moment. This just in. Despite what you may have heard, life is a game. Really. Anybody that says otherwise has never played a sport. Think about it. Sports teach us useful life lessons. Sayings like, hard work pays off. Patience is a virtue. And there are no shortcuts. Take on a whole new meaning once you've played sports. Competition toughens us up, too. It forces us to push ourselves. And it reminds us not to take anything in life for granted. At the end of the day, when the final whistle blows, sports teach lessons that can make us better athletes and teammates. More importantly, they teach us lessons that can help prepare us for life. So yeah, life is a game, and each of the more than 160,000 high school athletes in Indiana is better off for playing. High school sports. Pure spirit, pure sport. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the high schools in your community. Back to uh, the halftime show here. We are joined by Coach Sean Smith of the boys' basketball team who had their first scrimmage today. Um, opened last night with Senator Madness, then had a scrimmage today at Northeast Du Bois. Coach Smith, what are you thinking about this season? Well, I'm excited. I think we got a great group of kids, and, and they're really working hard and eager to learn, and, and that's exciting as a coach, uh, getting an opportunity to you know, just see kids get after it and, and you know, being able to, to mold and shape them over the course of a season and see a lot of growth. I think it'll be a team that you know, we'll see a, a lot of growth over the course of the year, and I'm really, really excited about just to work with them every day and, and try to help them improve. I, was, I came to Senator Madness last night, which was a great fundraiser for you guys, able to get some, some people in the stands, able to see some, some basketball. You know, I was very impressed with your, your freshman crew, how they came in, and, you know, they competed every single one of them, whether it was, you know, the guys running with your, your first and second team or, you know, your, your, your C team players. You know, everybody competed very well last night, I thought. Yeah, last night was a great event. I, I was really impressed with all, you know, basically all the grade levels all the way you know, all the way across the spectrum there. I thought all the kids played really hard and competed, and, and uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I want to give uh, Coach Myers a, a shout out. He really spearheaded that and uh, putting that together. And, and just, again, we appreciate everyone's help, the parents' contributions with, with the chili, and, and uh, you know, it's everybody involved, I, you know, just for, for helping make it be a, a really great event. And I, I think everybody had a good time. Yeah, definitely. It was a it was a great time. There's great chili up there. Um, you know, you ran out just about the right time. I think you know everybody <laughs> yeah. everybody came through and had some. And you know there was there wasn't you know any leftovers to take home. And it was a great night of, of Senator basketball. Uh, tell me today, how'd your scrimmage go? I wasn't able to make it over there. So well, uh, you know, it, it was a good good test for us. Uh, you know, Du Bois has a veteran team returning. A lot of the kids that played today, I, I remember when we played them a few years ago. They were sophomores. Um, you know, they were definitely a lot more physical than us, and it was good for us to, to kind of see the speed level of, of varsity basketball and how physical it is. And, and uh, you know, we, we were fortunate to pick that scrimmage up kind of here at the last second. So we, did, we didn't really have – we hadn't really planned for that. So, uh, you know, to have a Senator Madness last night play four quarters of running clock basketball, eight-minute cl running clock, and then today, less than 24 hours later, turn around and have to go play – 
uh, for 12 minute quarters of running clock. Uh, you know, it, it was a test for our guys. And, uh, you know, we, our first quarter we opened up and played really well. I thought we executed really well in the man to man quarter and, and uh, played some good basketball. Uh, the second quarter kind of hit a little bit of a wall on some things and, and definitely, definitely saw some uh, aspects that we need to really, really work on as we get, you know, get to move into the season here. Um, but, you know, we competed pretty well. Uh, the third quarter, the pressing quarter, we really struggled, which, you know, we know that's going to happen. We got, you know, we're going to have to really work on that. And, uh, and I think we also, fatigue set in. And, you know, we, they just had another gear, you know, today uh, that we didn't have. Uh, and in the fourth quarter, same thing. Again, I think they felt like, you know, we just, I felt like we had, uh, it maybe just kind of struggled a little bit with the speed and, and the conditioning factor, uh, you know, and they had a, just an, another gear and they were able to, uh, you know, really move the ball a lot quicker and move without it and just their intensity level was a lot higher than ours in that third and fourth quarter. So, uh, you know, it's going to be something, you know, it's a process for us to learn, you know, that, that, that uh, you got to come to play for 32 minutes and, and we're going to find out what that's about next and that's the next step and, and uh, you know, how to, how to maintain your intensity for 32 minutes, how to play hard for two to 32 minutes and, and focus for 32 minutes and execute and all that good stuff. But, you know, it's going to be a learning process here in the early going. But, uh, you know, I think the guys, uh, you know, like I said, are, they're eager to learn, and I'm you know, excited to, to be a part of that process with them. Definitely, definitely. Um, starting off the season, start off with Salem here Wednesday night, um, home opener, night before Thanksgiving. You know, give me your give me your thoughts on the night before Thanksgiving. I know that's <laughs> not something that you're you're used to because it's it's kind of unique to West Washington Salem. Um, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's a big rivalry game, and everybody gets excited, and everybody comes home to watch it. And uh, you know, it's it's a great atmosphere. Uh, it's a good situation for our kids to play in and, and be a part of that. And uh, it's kind of a tournament style atmosphere. And, uh, you know, it's it's an opportunity to come out and again, you know, find out what we're made of. And, you know, they have a really great team. They 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 lost some guys, but they uh, certainly have some really key contributors coming back, and they should be really solid in the Mid Southern Conference and, and be competitive in their sectional. So I, you know, I think it's a it's a big challenge for us. And uh, but you know, it's an opportunity for us to come out and compete, find out what we're made of, and and uh, you know. See, you know, see what we can do, and, and uh, again, we got a lot of, a lot of guys playing with really limited experience. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity to get some experience for our guys as well, and, and see where we're at. Well, coach, it was great talking to you. Good luck over the next couple of days before uh, your first game with Salem here at home Wednesday. Uh, varsity tip is at 7:30. Um, you know, and the the JV will tip around six. So you know, definitely come out and and support the the. Uh, boys as they open their season here Wednesday, again, the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, so Coach Smith, thank you very oh much well, for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. <clears throat> We're going to step away here, a short commercial break from the IHSA, and we will be back in just a moment. Hey, honey, is this your course schedule for the fall? Yep. Ah, let me see here. English, good. Chemistry, trigonometry, excellent. World history. Oh, I love world history. Baseball? Wait, baseball? Baseball isn't a course, honey. Well, sure it is, Mom. High school sports are about so much more than winning and losing. They teach lessons that can't be taught in a classroom, like accountability and self-discipline, the value of teamwork. I may not be earning a grade, but I'm learning how to compete later in life. Isn't that what getting a good education is all about? Yes, of course it is. I was just testing you. <laughs> what can teenagers here in Indiana learn from participating in high school sports? Plenty, as it turns out. That's why they're called education-based athletics. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Back to live action. We're going to run down some stats for the Lady Senators. Uh, leading the way in scoring is Chelsea Carter with 11. <laughs> on 4 of 11 from the line and 1 of uh, 4 of 11 from the field and 1 of 1 from the line. Uh, hat Maddie Bowsman comes in with 6 points on 2 of 8 from the floor and 2 of 3 from the free throw line. Hattie Griffiths chips in 4 on 1 of 5 from the floor and 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Cassidy Keltner with 2 on 1 of 3. Uh, Cora Miller with two on one of five. Bailey Roll has one point on one of two from the free throw line. 
Gracie Abels gets it in the game but does not score. For the Lanesville Lady Eagles, they are led in scoring by Hare with 14. Adams with only six. Not going to make her 20 if she continues at that pace. Um, but uh, definitely uh, Maddie Bowsman with some lockdown defense. They're going to keep her um, hopefully under that 20-point average. And then their other point comes from Haas, who is one of one from the field on a two-point field goal. Rebounding for the Lady Senators. Um, they have 27 total rebounds led by, get this, 5-4 point guard <laughs> Hattie Griffiths leading the way with seven total rebounds, two offensive and five defensive. Um, she also does have two assists. Maddie Bowsman has two assists for the team's four total, and I've got them for six turnovers. Um, the Lanesville Lady Eagles are led in rebounding by Adams with five. Hare also has five. They have 13 total as a team. I've got them with one assist and 12 turnovers. So, um, you know, definitely a, a battle of teams that, you know, aren't playing super high-quality basketball here with, with, you know, 12 turnovers and a half. So um, I'm sure both teams want to clean that up as we go into the second half. I'm sure that's something that Coach Russell and um, Coach Smith talk to their teams about. They've got to protect the ball a little better than what they had been. Yeah, the, the also seemed like the, um, the shot selection for the Lady Senators could have been improved. I think the zone messed them up a little bit. They had a hard time get going um, on a number of trips. Going to start the second half. Lady Senators basketball. Nice bucket underneath by Cassidy Keltner. Yeah, you can see Coach Russell had him set up to run the, the play against the zone coming out and yeah. prepared to start the third quarter. So hopefully we'll do better against the zone this half. Lady Senators out in there man-to-man. -man. Keltner with the rebound. Bowsman continues her struggles from the layup area. Yeah, she just got to get it under control. Yeah. Twenty-eight, twenty-two. Defense by Chelsea. That's got to be five. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Going to get five seconds on Brumley. So that goes down as a turnover. Lady Senators are up twenty-eight, twenty-two. Just over seven minutes to go here in the third period. Miller unable to knock that one down. Bowsman with the rebound, unable to get that. Miller up again, unable to get it. Miller's second chance, still not able to get it. Kilner, Kilner. finally gets it. We got a whole slew of players underneath getting, getting attempts and rebounds. Going to get a timeout from the Lady Eagles. We're going to step aside, take a short commercial break, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Have you noticed sports today are different? Today's athletes are bigger and stronger. They run faster, jump higher, and hit harder than ever before. But there is one thing that hasn't changed about sports, and that's the importance of practicing sportsmanship. At the Indiana High School Athletic Association, we like to remind you that winning isn't everything. The way you play matters, and a true champion plays the game with respect. For the opponent, for the coaches, and for the officials, True champions practice sportsmanship with the same degree of intensity that they play the games themselves. Back to live action here. Lady Senators start off that third period with a uh, slew of rebounds, <clears throat> but they were all offensive. Carter with the ball, gonna save it in. Throw ahead to Maddie Bowsman, who leaked out on that one. Unable to control it though. Hattie Griffiths misses. Adams with the rebound. Going to go the whole way. Well done by Cassidy. 
<laughs> Going to get a jump ball there. Kathy could have easily picked up a foul there. Yeah. It was nice to see her be nice smart. Nice job on that of one. being smart, not challenging that. That's not a ball that you have to challenge. That's a ball that, you know, is, or a shot that's going to be tough to hit anyway, so you don't have to challenge that one. Just put your hands up. Lady Eagles settle, settle into their offense. Turner misses. Hard to Pace. rebound out of the zone. Yeah, because you don't have a person that you're matched up to that you have to rebound against. So, yeah, Bowsman pulls that rebound down, goes into the front court. Carter for three. Bang. <laughs> Lady Senators jump out to an 11 point lead here to start the third. Turner with the bucket. Cassidy with Cass another board. Cassidy with bucket. another board and bucket. She's playing well this quarter. Yeah. And she's already got six points this quarter. Oh, going to get a foul on Chelsea Carter. She's on the ground trying to... Uh, pull the pull the ball out of there, but then as the Lady Eagle stands up, Carter gets nothing but arms. So, <laughs> yeah, that was an easy one. I think uh, everybody in the place knew that was a foul on Chelsea. Yeah. Oh, Cora got thrown out of the way for the rebound on that one. Chelsea Carter ends up with the steal. Miller underneath with the bucket. <laughs> Miller now going to pick up the foul on the other end. Yeah, probably not what Coach Russell wants her to be challenging there. Yeah. Daniel Hare steps up to the line for two shots. Coach Russell's got a big decision to make whether he leaves Cora in there with the 13-point lead or, or pull her out. They've been playing pretty well, so I'm sure he, he wants to leave her in there a few more minutes. Yeah. Second free throw up and good. Comes over to Carter. Carter to Bowsman. Bowsman underneath for the layup. Good bucket. By Chelsea and Maddie was calling for it. It was nice for That's eight for Maddie on the evening. Nice save off yeah. of uh, Turner's foot. That was a hustle play by Maddie. She was really had no chance to get the ball, but but uh, somehow was able to get to it and at least get it off of the other girl's foot. Yeah. Lady Senators are out to a 13-point lead here halfway through the third period. Probably should have been a bounce pass. and Might have got that through. The, the other way it wasn't going to work. Chest pass. Adams up and good. Going to have an attempt at a three-point play here. Going to get Carter for her second. Adams at the line, up and good. 39-29, 3.52 here to go. Carter up, no good, Adams with the rebound. Seemed like that was just gonna be an easy shot for Chelsea and somehow it ended up being tougher than it looked. Maddie down to the other end. Gonna stay with the Lady Senators. Out top, back into Maddie Bowsman for three. There we go. She's starting to get going. <clears throat> Maddie's not been super hot from the three-point line this year, but she's starting to feel it a little bit. 
Yeah, Maddie's a, a player that can get her shot about any time she wants. She's long and athletic, and she's got a lot of moves. And and hard to guard out out yeah. deep. I mean, yeah. Pavey for three, unable to hit that one. Pavey and Bowsman battle each other in the corner. Goes off of Bowsman. That's a stepped on the line. <laughs> Turner with the turnover. Chelsea was pretty physical there. I was worried she might have picked up her third. But yeah. uh, fortunately, I think the girl stepped out of bounds before, the, uh, before she ever made contact with her. Ball coming into the front court. Cassidy underneath, unable to get it. Rebound out to Hattie. There's Hattie. Hattie, right spot, right time. Yeah. Good start to the second half by the Lady Senators. Yep. They jump out to the 44-29 lead. We're going to step aside since we've got a full timeout here by the Lanesville Lady Eagles. We'll be back after a short message. Have you noticed? Sports today are different. Today's athletes are bigger and stronger. They run faster, jump higher, and hit harder than ever before. But there is one thing that hasn't changed about sports, and that's the importance of practicing sportsmanship. At the Indiana High School Athletic Association, we like to remind you that winning isn't everything. The way you play matters, and a true champion plays the game with respect. For the opponent, for the coaches, and for the officials. True champions practice sportsmanship with the same degree of intensity that they play the games themselves. Sports may evolve, athletes may change, but the mark of a true champion will always be the same. Play like a champion. Practice sportsmanship. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the high schools in your community. Back to live action. The Lady Senators are up 44-29. 2.30 left to go here in the third period. Gracie Adams up. Going to get a foul on Maddie Bowsman hitting her on the arm as she shoots. Yeah, that's pretty obvious one on Maddie there. That's her first of the evening, though, so with as, as tight of defense as Maddie plays, you know, she doesn't get in foul trouble very often. She does a good job keeping the ball out of her, the girl that she's defending's hands. Right. And uh, if you can keep it away from them, normally you can keep from getting the fouls. Yeah. Gracie Adams, second free throw up and good. Brings it to 44-31. Bowsman with the drive. Little floater, no good. Adams with the rebound. Out ahead. There's a block by Keltner. That's her one swing that Coach Russell <laughs> always allows her to have. There's a nice take by Chelsea yeah, Carter at the other end. She makes the floater. Yeah. <clears throat> Coach Russell always says that Cassidy gets one swing at him. <laughs> Other than that, she's got to go straight up, but that's her one swing that she gets. Yeah, I think she made a swing in the first half and clobbered the girl. <laughs> <laughs> so she you're got taken out for it, too. Yeah, so you're saying Coach Russell's <laughs> not going to be happy with that second swing that she took. I don't know. That's that volleyball background that she's got. So. Yeah. Oh. Gracie block. Adams with a rebound. Yeah, you got to block her out. She'll make you pay if she gets the ball that, in that kind of position. Oh, nice Hattie. move by Hattie. Hattie. Oh, my. Hattie unable to finish underneath. Yeah, Hattie made a nice play. Spun right between the two. Just couldn't make it. Adams up. No good. Bowsman with the jump ball. Bailey Roll going to come in the game for Cassidy. Probably a, a smart decision there. Gonna <coughs> get going to uh, sit Cassidy down for a little bit once she's had a couple of swings, a couple of good defensive plays. You don't want her to pick up a foul here. Lanesville going to pick up full court pressure to. Stay on her. Good job, D. There you go. Come on. Awesome. Going to get another jump ball underneath. Going to go back to Lanesville here. 
Bailey did a nice job of bringing it up the court. She just got down too low and out of position. Yeah. So, uh, probably should have pulled it out, set it up the offense. Well, these Senators are playing really tight defense here. Gracie Adams with the rebound. Number two, Maddie Bowsman picks up a foul. Apparently the Lanesville bench gets a warning also. Gracie Adams free throw up and good. I believe they had an assistant up off the bench, which you can't have while play is happening. So second one up, no good. Miller with the rebound. Lady Center is fortunate to keep the ball there. That's a pretty dangerous cross-court pass, and uh, lucky to still have the ball. Yeah. Forty seconds left to go here in the third period. There's a cross court to Chelsea Carter. Carter up, no good. That one's way short. Bailey Roll pulls down the rebound and brings it up. It's from her time playing uh, point guard for the past couple of seasons. Carter for three. No good. Maddie Bowsman rebounds it. Nine seconds. Get a good shot here right before the half. End of the third. Roll. No good. Miller. No good. Can't complain about that wide open 10 footer. Yeah, that's a, a shot that you're going to live with. We're going to step aside here, short commercial break from the IHSA, and we'll be back for the fourth period here in just a moment. If an individual student athlete or team wins a high school state championship, it's an amazing thing. And it goes in! It goes in! It's also just the icing on the cake. That's because young people in Indiana who participate in education-based athletics are already winners. Studies show that win or lose, participation helps to impart skills they can use to enjoy greater success in other areas of their lives. School sports teach the benefits of teamwork, the value of self-motivation, and the importance of accountability. They also help to foster stronger work habits and higher levels of self-esteem. In other words, the true value of school sports can't be measured in terms of wins or losses. If an individual or team goes to state, it's an incredible accomplishment. But regardless of the outcome, today's student athletes are already destined to go far. School sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Back to live action here as the Lady Senators uh, do take the court for the fourth period. They are up 46-34. It's a nice third quarter by the Lady Senators. Bowsman with a nice dribble and bucket. A couple of uh, shout outs there. Um, Keith Abels, who is usually on the air, is uh, apparently out on a date with his wife and a group of other people, which is why he can't be here. So he jumped on. And also Mr. Brent Ingram, the uh, high school uh, the high school PE teacher, also jumped on. So uh, shout out to both of those people. Brimley picks up her third foul of the evening. Keith would be glad to know that Gracie got in the game and played yeah. really well. Oh, Chelsea Carter with a, a brain lapse there. Uh, <laughs> I think she knew that she couldn't dribble, but she didn't know what else to do. Yeah, she knew she couldn't dribble, but she knew she was starting to fall also, so yeah. she had to do something with yeah, it. Yeah, what so. am I going to do? <clears throat> a little bit of pinball there with the ball. Out ahead, Chelsea Carter runs that one down. Yeah, Chelsea's a competitor. She's, uh, she gets after it. Yeah. Come on, 
Brumley for three. Maddie Bowsman with the rebound. Maddie had good position on the Adams girl that time. Yeah. Wavy Senators are out, 48-36. Uh, a little under seven minutes to go here in the fourth period. Keltner goes up and gets fouled. Gracie Adams had got a couple of rebound putbacks in the third quarter when she was uh, inside of Maddie on rebounds, but uh, Maddie had position on her that time. Yeah. Cassidy Keltner up to the free throw line. Hits the first one. That is her tenth on the year. She's 7 of 10 for 70%. Right where Coach Russell wants them. Next one up and good also. Lady Senators stretch that lead back out to 14. Once again, remember, you can join us on West Washington live stream or WW Senator Radio. Um, the WW Senator Radio Row 1 will be up until December 1st, and then after that we won't be posting videos there anymore. It will all be to the WW uh, Senator live stream, so make sure that you like both of those pages um, for future games. We will put Salem on both of them, but then after that it will uh, only be on the West Washington live stream one. So Coach Russell taking the chance with uh, Cora in the third quarter. Uh, well, she got her third foul about the same time, but I think he's going to take her out now in the fourth quarter when she picked up the fourth. Sarah Stice checks into the game to give Cora Miller a, a break here. Sarah Stice, another one of those uh, phenomenal freshmen on Coach Russell's team. That one goes in. Apparently banks are still open this late here in Campbellsburg. <laughs> <laughs> Bowsman up. Bucket is good and the foul. There are plays where Maddie just looks exceptional, and that was one of them. Really, she knew where she was going, knew what she was going to do with it, got the ball and put it in. 31 hair picks up her second foul. Bowsman to the line. That one's off. Hare with the rebound. I think we jinxed Maddie, Craig. <laughs> I'll keep my mouth shut on her free throws from now on. Yeah, I did too. There's Keltner with another block. Coach Russell yells at him, let's go, let's go. He wants him to push the pace here. Put your foot on the gas. Nice move by Chelsea Carter for her 18th point of the night. Chelsea will go. If she's got the ball, it's uh, she doesn't have any problem when Coach Russell says go. The bucket. I don't know who's going to get that foul. Maddie Bowsman with her third foul. So Pavey's going to shoot the free throw here. That's up. No good, but Bowsman tips it to herself to get the rebound. Doug, you'll like this. Tara's up top watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's she's up top watching on live stream. She's watching oh. us. Well, she's listening to you. <laughs> she, she wanted to hear what I had to say, I guess. <laughs> Keltner with a nice move underneath and up and good. Well, Cassidy's played great the second half. That's her 12th point of the night, so she's she's definitely got it going now. Yeah, most of those here in the second half, too. <clears throat> Chelsea Carter with really active hands. We're going to get a double dribble on Pavey. Well, the lady center's up 16. Like to see him stretched out a little bit more and put this thing away. Stice. Unable to get anything on that one. A little bit of a force. Gracie Adams, no good. All Chelsea right. Carter. Carter up, no good. Stice on the ground, kicks it out to Keltner. Nice play by the Lady Senators till they missed the layup. <laughs> Carter's going to pat her stats a little bit there with a missed layup and then an offensive rebound. 
They're going to pick up a foul. Mackenzie Pavey picks up her first foul of the evening. Chelsea Carter goes to the line where she is 11 of 17 on the year for 65%. First one up and good. Lady Senators stretch it out a little more, 57-40. Chelsea Carter awaits the second one. It's up and good also. So 58-40 here in the fourth period. <laughs> Lady Senators are up on Lanesville. We're going to get probably Keltner with the body here. Her third on the evening. One up and good. Brumley now has five on the evening. Second one up. No good. Keltner with the rebound. Bowsman drives baseline. Up. No good. There's Coomer. No good. Adams with a bucket. Adams is a good player. She's she can score in a lot of different ways. She plays hard, plays good defense, gets a lot of rebounds. I may have jinxed this on her, too. She had six in the first half and has ten already in the second half for 16 total. Yeah. yeah she that did. was a kickball there. I would say she has a good chance <laughs> to get to her average of 20. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Keltner out, Miller back in. Well, Sarah and Gracie both uh, gave us valuable minutes. Yeah. Tonight, good to see the freshman get in there and help us out. Yep. Allow Coach Russell, I think, to rest Ryan a little bit. Hopefully get the shoulder better. Miller up and good. <clears throat> I talked to uh, Ryan, uh, let's see, it was after Tuesday's game. And she said that her shoulder would have to be cut off for her to miss the Salem game. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe she said that. That's those were her her words. So, we got to travel on Chelsea Carter. Gonna get a full timeout here from Lanesville. They uh, want to talk it over a little bit with 3:31 to go here in the fourth period. Lady Senators are up 60-47. We'll be back after a short message. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Indiana. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Back to live action here. Lady Senators are up 60-43. 3.30 left to go here in the fourth period. It's a nice drive by Brumley. Pretty poor defense. Four Senators watched her go in for a layup. Keltner up. No good. Bowsman with the rebound. Good defense by Hattie. I don't know what we're going to get. A block, I believe, is what yeah. the official is going to call here. Yeah, I don't know what he really wanted there. I thought she was pretty much in, in the spot and was beating the girl to the, to the, to the spot. But. 
team's ninth, so we're going to go and shoot one and one here. Gracie Adams at the free throw line. Maybe I can jinx her uh, with her free throw percentage here. First one up and good. Didn't look like it. No, that looked like a pretty smooth shot there. <coughs> Second one up and good. Gets her 18 on the evening. Looks like they've adopted a uh, kind of face guard Chelsea Carter the rest of the game. Yeah, I think they've, they've gone man and they want to try to force the tempo a little bit. They don't have a chance unless we turn it over a little bit. Swings over the top to Maddie Bowsman. Maddie up and good. Looks like we're going to go to zone. Looks like here. we're going to go to a 2 3 zone. See if they can shoot us out of it. Haven't seen many outside shots go in for the Lady Eagles, so. That's Keltner with her fourth. You get five, so you might as well use them, apparently. So we've got Keltner and Miller, both with four, Bowsman with three, Griffiths and Carter with two, so. Free throw up and good. Yeah, fortunately, we're in. It's going to take a pretty uh, significant change of pace to, to for the Lady Eagles to come back and get this one. Yeah. That one up, no good. Adams over the top with the rebound. And it's up and good. So, Lady Senators are up 12 here. <coughs> Hattie with the drive. Um, unable to hit, but then knocked out of bounds by a Lady Eagle. So, Senators do retain possession here. There's Miller. That play is very attractive all the time. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she gets open on that one almost every time they run it. Yeah. That is much better defense there by Cassidy Keltner. Bowsman misses. Minute 45 here to go. Lady Senators up 64-50. Lady Senators uh, content to play zone and let uh, Lane, Lanesville work it around outside. And yeah. Brumley with the ball in her hand. I guess that's Coach Russell's way of slowing it down <laughs> to go to the zone. <laughs> Pavey going to pick up the offensive foul here. We're not going to burn time on the offensive end. We'll burn time on yeah, the defense. Yeah, we'll, we'll play defense <laughs> here. and. <laughs> They're going to take the ball away from Hattie Griffiths, it looks like, but Chelsea Carter is going to be able to get the ball inbounded to her. So she brings the ball up. Cassidy Keltner underneath with a nice bucket. Carter with the assist on that bucket. 66-50. Brumley misses that one. Miller with the rebound. Carter. Puts that one in for her 22nd bucket, 22nd point of the evening. Looks like Lanesville is going to send in some other players. <laughs> Maddie, another. Uh, play where she knocks the ball off the girl's leg out of bounds. We've got quite a slew of Lady Eagles who check into the game here. Ball's back in Hattie Griffith's hand, right where Coach Russell wants it in Hattie's hands. Hattie with another bucket. <laughs> Number 11, Philpot picks up that foul. Philpot going to check out of the game. Emma Coomer comes in for her. I think that's the Lady Center's first 20 point lead of the night, I well. think. And uh, Hattie will try to stretch it out another point.
That one up and good. Ball out of bounds on the three-point play to Hattie Griffiths. <laughs> Coach Russell asks the Lady Senators to please keep them out of the lane. <laughs> Bowsman going to give the ball off to her junior running mate, Hattie Griffiths, who's going to bring it up over half court. Good job, Emma. Good job, Emma. Stay out of here. Game's going to run out of time here. Lady Senators do win 71-50. We're going to take a short commercial break, let us tally some stats, and we'll be back with the post-game show after this. What makes high school sports here in Indiana so special? They do. You do. We all do. High school sports. It's the we that every community needs. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Back to live action here at T. Kerbin Tower Gymnasium on Ron Smith Court where the Lady Senators were victorious tonight, 71-50 to over the Lanesville Eagles. Scoring breakdown goes like this. Hattie Griffiths with nine points on three of nine from the floor, three of three from the free throw line to uh, shore up that 65% free throw percentage that she started off the year with. Maddie Bowsman gets 17 on seven of 19 uh, from the floor. Chelsea Carter, 22 points on eight of 19. Cassie Keltner, 14 points on 6 of 13 from the floor. Uh, Cora Miller, 8 points on 4 of 10. Sarah Stice doesn't score, um, but does get in the game. Bailey Roll with 1 point on 1 of 2 from the free throw line. And Gracie Abel's also in the game, but does not score. Breakdown for the Lanesville Lady Eagles. <coughs> they go with Turner has 2 points on 1 of 7. Brumley has 8 points on 2 of 10. Adams has 20 points on 7 of 15, so right at her average. Um, Haas has 2 points on 1 field goal uh, attempt. Hare has 16 on 4 of 9. Um, and Pavey has 2 on 1 of 6. Philpot, Brum, or let's see, Philpot, Coomer, Nunnemaker, and Keebler all get in the game but do not tally in the score column. Rebounds for the Lanesville Lady Eagles. They have 30 total, 11 offensive rebounds, 19 defensive rebounds. Um, they did have one block, and I had them for 18 turnovers. Lady Senators, on the other hand, pulled down 49 rebounds, 20 offensive rebounds, 29 defensive rebounds, have 12 assists, and only 14 turnovers. So that means they had two turnovers in the second half, Doug, because I had them for 12 in the first, so only two in the second, which makes it, you know, clean that game up quite a bit there. Um, in the uh, second half. Uh, shooting stats for the um, Lanesville Lady Eagles, they were 16 of 52 from the floor for 30%. They were 16 of 39 from two-point range for, for 41%. They were 0 of 13 from three-point range for 0%. That's not going not gonna to help you out much when you, when you don't shoot, um, you know, when you don't hit any three-pointers and you take 13 of them. From the free throw line, they were 18 of 23 for 78%, so that's a, that's a pretty good average there for the Lanesville Lady Eagles. West Washington does come out tonight and shoot 28 of 72 from the floor for 38%, uh, 24 of 59 from two-point range for 40%, and four of 13 from three-point range for 30%. They were 11 of 14 from, th from the free throw line for 78%. Um, breakdown scoring by quarters. West Washington comes out in the first period and outscores the Lady Eagles 18 to 12. Second period, Lanesville gets West Washington 10 to 8. The third period is where the West Washington Lady Senators really came out and started to stretch it out. Uh, they outscored the Lanesville Lady Eagles 20 to 12 in the third period. Fourth period, more of the same. 
uh, Lady Senators 25, Lady Eagles only 16 to bring your total to 71 to 50 um, for the game here. We're going to step aside, take a short commercial break, and we will have Coach Russell with us when we return. Let's talk about the X's and O's of family entertainment. Every parent in Indiana knows the importance of being able to draw up an activity that'll get you out of the house for a couple of hours. But it needs to be affordable. It needs to be family friendly. Above all, it needs to be fun. Now, let's talk about high school sports. Bang for your buck, school sports provide the perfect game plan for your family. You'll enjoy all of the drama and excitement competitive sports offer. You'll be supporting the future leaders of our community in a meaningful way. Best of all, you can take the entire family without breaking the bank. Heck, you won't even dent it. Now, enough chalk talk. Let's get out there and see what's playing at the high school in your community. School sports, good for our kids, good for our community. This message presented by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the Indiana Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. You got them by. Back to live action here. Uh, Coach Russell asked us if they out-rebounded them. Um, I'm looking at my stats. Uh, you got them by 19, which is surprising. Yeah, um, I would never guess that. <laughs> we're, we're joined by Coach Russell, and, and uh, he, he was asking about rebounds, and I'm sure he's probably shocked about that. And a lot of them were offensive, so you had – I think I had you for 20 offensive rebounds. Uh, that's because we missed a lot of layups yep. and get rebounds and to pad our stats is what I'm going to say. Well, I, I mentioned that in the game once. So, uh, Coach Russell, you know, a great way to come out and get a win tonight. You do win 71-50 uh, to 50 here tonight over the lanes of a Lady Eagles. Um, you know, your scoring breakdown – Chelsea had 22, Maddie had 17, Keltner had 14 in a in a nice start for her. Uh, Hattie has nine, and Miller has eight. So I mean, you know, another balanced scoring night with Chelsea leading the way for you. Chelsea got us going in the in the first half. I mean, she came out and hit, and then, I mean, you know, unfortunately for her with with Ryan and Taylor out tonight, she couldn't come out of the game. Hattie couldn't come out of the game. Uh, Maddie couldn't come out of the game. So those girls had to suck it up, and, and you know, I know there in the second quarter especially, uh, you saw Chelsea really start to hit that wall being tired because she was playing extremely hard. But, you know, there was just nobody at that point that I could put in to give her a minute break or so. And, you know, she gutted through it and then, you know, she, she played well. And, and, you know, second half, you know, we talked about some things at halftime. The second half, Cassidy Keltner came out and played the way that we see in practice every day and what I've been waiting for her to do in, a, in an actual game. And, you know, she came out and played extremely well. Yeah, she did. She played really well, um, especially in that second half when, when she came out in the third period. I don't have her, her third period stat um, in front of me, but, you know, she came out and played really well in that third period and really kind of took the game over in that, that yeah. third period. And, and that, that's why I told her and Cora in, in the locker room right before I came down here is, you know, we need that post presence that they gave us there in the second half. We need that every game. Because, you know, most teams are focusing right now on our guards. I mean, they're, they're going to pressure our guards and leave them one-on-one -on, -one on the inside, and they've got to be able to finish and, you know, become threats to where teams are going to have to start doubling down, and then that opens up your shooters even more. So, you know, but for that to happen, we've got we've got to have that consistent effort from Cora and Cassidy inside. You got, um, you know, some quality minutes from, from some of the girls who haven't got a whole lot of uh, varsity playing time here. You got, you got a, a nice push in the first half from Gracie Abels, um, you know, to, to give Cassidy and um, Cora kind of a, a break there. Uh, that wasn't a break. Cassidy and Cora were out because they made stupid fouls. Well, they were having to sit over here. <laughs> you you said that. You, yeah, you said I, it. I, I didn't. I told, it, I told them that, too. But, yeah, Gracie came in and gave us a, you know, kind of, a big, about five, six minutes she was yeah. in. I mean, she uh, didn't do anything Im super impressive, but she she was solid. Uh, got a couple rebounds, I think, and, you know, just played good defense, which, which was what we needed her to do at that time. And then you had Sarah Stice who yeah. came in at the end of the game and was able, not the end, but in right. the third and fourth period, you know, yeah. was able to control the ball and, and you know, kind of play some play some good defense you know not really looking for a whole, whole lot of scoring out of those two mm -hmm. but if they can come in and, and give you some give minutes some and breaks, especially especially right now I mean you know with with the limited or you know with some injuries and stuff yeah we got to be able to bring kids in and give them breaks because 
uh, you know, Tuesday night, it's it's going to be a war, and we're going to have to be able to bring kids in and give them some breathers, or or you know, we could be in trouble. Well, uh, segueing into that, you know, you've got Salem coming in Tuesday. We had uh, Coach Smith come down and talk about the boys. Give me a little a little bit about the, the girls. You're going to get some time to practice. It's going to be nice because you're going to actually get to focus on one team again, kind of like how you did Lanesville. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's your – what's your what are, well, you, what are you looking at? Let's just say we know the Salem personnel extremely well. Uh, I mean, very, very, very well. We know their strengths, their weaknesses. We know what they're going to do. And, you know, now it's going to be a matter of us coming out and – and executing, doing what we were supposed to do. Uh, we, until tonight after the game, we hadn't even talked about Salem, uh, you know, as a team, but we have a good idea of how we're going to play them, and, and that's what we're going to work on on Monday. And, you know, hopefully the girls come out and execute it and, you know, play hard. Uh, you know, we know they're going to play hard. Salem's going to play extremely hard. There's going to be a lot of people in here, I'm sure. It'll be a sectional type atmosphere. Uh, <clears throat> you know, with that being said, you, you do have Salem coming in, um, but you've got a long rest of your season too. So, you know, oh, you don't yeah, want to put yeah, it all in no, one no, in one basket, no. which I'm sure you're not. No, we, we don't do that. Some schools do that. Uh, we're not one of those that put everything in to this game. Uh, this is just another game against a school three times our size that we're just hoping that we can go out and compete it. Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, you've you've got, you know, your your team's a little banged up, and I already know the answer to this question before I ask it, but are you going to uh, have Ryan back? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, there, there was moments tonight where I was ready to put her in. I mean, in fact, I told her if we didn't get it together in the first two minutes of the third quarter, she was going in. But, you know, the more rest we can get her, the better it is for the long run. And, you know, as long as we play the way we did tonight, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. Well, Coach, we're going to let you head out of here. I know it's been a, a long day for you, so you can, you can get back up with your, with your family and get Ryan home, get her some rest. Um, we're going to name our, our player of the game right now, which we decided, uh, Doug and I decided, is going to be Cassidy Keltner getting her first uh, varsity start tonight. Um, you know, she did come in and pull, put in, chip in 14 points on 6 of 13. She was 6 of 12 from the two-point range, 1 of 3, or sorry, 1 0 of 1 from three-point range, and 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Um, does come in and get two blocks, six offensive rebounds, six defensive rebounds for 12 total. So she pulls in a double-double tonight with her 14 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah, and she, she did, as we said. I mean, start of the second half, she really got us going on. You know, and that's why I made it a point. I think at halftime, Hattie was our leading rebounder with seven rebounds. Yeah, she was. <laughs> and, and I said, it's not like the, the ball's bouncing out to her. She's in there fighting. I, you know, I need you girls to fight inside. And, you know, they responded. And, and Cass, the, the play that I think really got us going is where Cassidy swats that girl, keeps it in play, <laughs> and then leads the breakdown. I, I, don't, I think it was Chelsea or Maddie won, benefited off of a pass from Cassidy for a layup and really seemed to get us – really going at that time so yeah yeah good decision <coughs> and i want to thank you doug for filling in tonight yeah no problem <laughs> I, I haven't heard it but I, i'm sure it was good <laughs> yeah i think i kept it clean <laughs> <laughs> well thank you coach russell we're going to step away for a short commercial break and we'll come back um to wrap up and sign off for the senator live stream so we'll be back in just a moment from jamestown to jonesville from north salem to south milford from River Forest to Grass Creek. No matter where you live in Indiana, you can enjoy high school sports coverage at its very best on the IHSAA Champions Network. Presented by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. It's 35 powerhouse radio stations, Fox Sports Indiana, and the World Wide Web. Combining their vast resources to blanket the state, the Midwest, and the world with the purest, most riveting presentation of high school sports in America. From Anderson to Attica, Kendallville to Kokomo, follow the high school sports that make our state great all season long. Thank you, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, and welcome home. <clears throat> Back to uh, live action here. We do have some young players on the court 
including one of our varsity players, Holden Bowsman, who's out there getting some shots up. Uh, pretty much lives in the gym when your dad's the AD. You, you hang out here a lot, and your sister plays on the girls' team, and you play on the boys. You spend a lot of time in this gym. Um, with that, we're going to wrap up the broadcast of WW Senator live stream. Thank you for your support, and as always, um, spread the word about being able to watch the games on West Washington live stream. Final thoughts, Doug? Well, I just think uh, first I want to – Thank you, Craig, for allowing me to uh, sit in tonight. It's been a pleasure. Um, as far as Lady Senators, I, uh, you know, it's an impressive win for them against another 1A opponent. We've got uh, Salem coming up on uh, Tuesday. That'll be a real challenge for us. And then, uh, but I think it'll prepare us for the the types of games that it's going to take for us to to win that sectional. that has been so elusive over the last few years. Definitely. Uh, <coughs> with that, we will be back. Um, it's Tuesday, November 21st, from T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on Ron Smith Court where these same lady senators do take on the Salem Lions the um, two days before the uh, Thanksgiving break, the last school day before Thanksgiving break. Um, you know, it will be a packed house, so definitely, you know, make it in to the, to the gym. Um, but if you can't, you can always catch us on, on the live stream. So make sure you spread the word about that, and we hope to see you then. Thank you very much. <laughs>